Hello, my name is Lizzie Palmer and this is another episode of Lunar Poetry Shorts. We're in my house again and today I'm joined by Rachel Nakoro. Hello Rachel. Hello. How are you? I'm good thanks, how are you? Good, very well thanks. Nice to have you. Um, so as usual we will start with a poem. Brilliant. Okay so this poem is called Baby Blue. I've been in love with you since before we met. I'm drawn to your apologies and the way you leave the room when you need to cry. You tell me to give you a minute and you'll be all right, you just need to smoke a fag and sort yourself out. But darling, whilst you take another drag and your teeth chatter from a shiver on the inside, it's me that's left outside in the cold. So I hold you and light you up with that baby blue clipper that you own, but I keep like always. I'll keep it safe. You say you're not ready, but you know that when you are, I'll be ready to warm you up when your light goes out. I'm an anchor for you in the storm of your perceived inadequacies. And we know that these waters run deep, but I won't let you drown. Unless it's to drown out the sound that ricochets round the empty space between your heart and mine and continually tells you that you're not good enough. That space is a void, an abyss. An ether that you float in amongst death stars and supernovas and hazy days that you can't leave the bed. While when you're not floating beneath the heavens, you've got your head in the sand, but I need my feet on land. I want to fill that space, but I haven't got the grace to stand out in the cold anymore. You sparkle like dewdrops that glisten under a frazzled sun and your faux vegetarianism makes you pure magic. To me, you're perfect, the perfect mess. And I want nothing less than for you to see you like I do, but I am cold and you keep leaving the room. So I hold you and give you my heart that you own, but I'll keep like always, I'll keep it safe. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So my first question for you, Rachel, is why poetry? (laughs) (laughs) Why poetry? (laughs) Um, mm, Curiosity, I think, more than anything for me. Um, I remember when I was in Birmingham a few must have been a year ago actually, I was going to say a few months ago, but it was a year ago, Um, my friend Kate sent me a passage of Jeanette Winston's book, Why Be Happy When You Could Be Normal. And it says something around about that a tough life needs a tough language. And it just spoke about the fact that a lot of people think that performance is a place to hide behind characters and masks and some people use it like that I think but ultimately I use it to find things Mm -hmm. I can't find when life is busy and there is so much going on around you and when I get to write I get to ask questions yeah um and I quite like that when I write poetry I don't need to have answers um it just allows me to tell stories and be honest and I think that's why great um so what have been your main influences as a writer since you started writing poetry um I think I feel like I'm supposed to say some of my favorite writers but I'm not going to one of my role models Daniel Hoffman Gill um is now a really dear friend of mine but he used to be my acting coach and I think he influenced me a lot when I was younger um, in just giving me courage and mm. allowing me to see that I had something that I didn't really, I wasn't really quite sure what it was. But I, when you see someone see something in their eyes, then you, it helps you to find it. Um, so that was, that's really useful and, and he's been a, a good friend of mine for a lot, many years. Also, Simon Stevens, an amazing playwright and I met with him years ago at Lyric in Hammersmith and he um, encouraged me over coffee um, and like doodles in my Tracy Beaker notebook to keep <laughs> writing and that that was a huge made, made a huge impact for me so yeah. so it seems like 
um, for you, the writing is quite heavily tied in with the performance side of things as well, is that right? Yeah, it's huge for me because I, the way I write is um, I more see myself telling a story mm. rather than I'm a very visual person. Yeah. So I write in a way that I feel like I can speak so that it translates quite similarly to the way that I speak, very conversational sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really important because I find that when I when I write that way, there's an element of honesty um, in telling the story. Yeah, definitely. Great. Um, well, on that note, we will have a second poem, please. Awesome. Uh, this poem is called Oh Dear. So, there's all this mounting pressure, yeah, from I don't know what, like a balloon filled with loneliness waiting to go pop, telling me that I'll burst at the seams, that I've got to find the person of my dreams in every independent coffee shop or that balloon will fucking pop. And you'll be left thinking, I've got to be with someone or I'm left with me. Now, trust, that's a messed up philosophy because how can you love anyone if you don't love yourself? Take a book off the shelf and read until the pages are wrinkled and the evening is sprinkled with a mad sparkle of contentment. The kind that says, this is great and I'd like to share it. So you do. Swipe left, swipe right, pray to God that you just might come across enough tinder matches to ignite that fire. You were terrified isn't there. That spark, that flame, that all-consuming love affair that you heard about from a friend of a friend that whispered in your ear that anything is possible if you just believe in love. Mm, sorry, love, but I call bullshit. Now, understand that I'm not a cynic, but it's a four-letter word that I've so often heard. And despite everything that I've learned over the years, it's become abundantly clear that you could fit that knowledge on the end of a thumbtack because the overwhelming fact is that there isn't a right or a wrong. There are just choices. We just are. And it just is. So, I meet you. And make sure to say let's keep it casual because of course that is what is naturally in the best interests of both of us. Nothing much to discuss. Maybe if we're clear from the start we don't have to worry about breaking each other's hearts. We'll keep dancing because it's fun and we're not hurting anyone. And I'll make sure to say that you never cease to amaze when I realise that you've worn the same jumper for five days. And then I realise that I only notice because I've been there for all five of them. Oh dear. Ever thought of yourself as the kind of person that could dismiss feelings at the drop of a hat? I thought I was really great at that, that I could start something that I knew would come to an end, tilt my head to the left and ask if we could still be friends because I felt love. And it can be fantastic, but there's something to be said for all the other shit. But this is really just for now, shtick. I thought I was really great at it. But then there's that oh dear. You know, the one from before when it appears to be clear that you've become my greatest fear. Cheers. And when I accidentally say something weird, then I'd listen when you'd laugh a bit like a psychopath in that way that you do when things were far too funny not to. And it's that way that you gave me a wind-up dinosaur because you foresaw me being lonely on the two-minute journey to the shop. And then, here we are again. Oh dear. Then I see it's too late to go back to the date when this was great in a disposable kind of way. So now, when I say, let's keep it open, I'm kind of hoping that there'll be enough belief in the way that we feel that one day we'll wake up and know that this is the real deal. But it's not, and we both know it. At least not for right now, and neither of us have the power to make it work, and surprisingly, it hurts to know there'll be a definite end to this. Because the sad thing is that these inevitable ends can be somewhat sticky. It can be kind of tricky to extract ourselves from each other's lives when right now we seem to make each other thrive. I can see there are some casualties from these casual ties. And when I look into your eyes as we kiss goodnight, I know that none of it was lies, but that this was for now and that's perfectly all right. I just might miss the way that we say goodnight. 
great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I met you, I think, not long after you'd just done your first open mic performance at Ronnie Scott's. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. <laughs> um, so what I wanted to ask was how you feel your work has developed since that first time you got up and performed poetry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's weird because at Jazz versus Duke Books, I remember I had this phone just inches away from my face and my hand was shaking. I was reading a poem about sexual assault at the speed of lightning and light, I mean, not lightning, wow. (laughs) And um, I just, I was shaking, I was terrified. And for a long time, when I was circling the open mic nights and trying things out, I was doing a lot of shaking legs and shaking hands and very fast speaking and being terrified. It's very exposing, reading poetry. Yeah. And I suppose over the last year, I've kind of learned how to embrace that. It's all right to be scared. Mm-hmm. I've, I've thought before that I had to be on stage and act like I wasn't terrified of telling people how I felt about things or didn't know how I felt about things, and that's just ridiculous. So I think um, allowing myself to be confused and be awkward and and be frustrated and going with that has meant that I've been able to write in lots of different ways um, and dedicate different writing styles for different topics Mm -hmm. as is appropriate for me and not put myself in a kind of box that's like oh okay so this poem's good for slam so now all my poems have to be kind of slam poetry or um, sometimes I write much more kind of literary beautiful things and sometimes I'm frustrated about the world and that's that's it's nice to be free to do that yeah and um, so i think i've grown in confidence ma- mainly over the last year a lot and that's been really nice yeah well it would seem that way because you've been winning things left right and center uh which leads me <laughs> on to my next question <laughs> quite nicely um so you've just won the farrago uk slam championship Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that and also what else you've got going on at the moment. Um, yeah, so John Paul O'Neill has been running the UK Slam Championship for a very long time. And, um, as we all know. As we all know. <laughs> and um, and I, I won a slam last year, um, or a couple, and so qualified for the final this year. Um, and I think it was just, the whole thing was very overwhelming. I'm still pretty overwhelmed by it. I, especially because this year has just been a kind of a whirlwind mm-hmm. and I'm always very critical of the stuff that I do. So slams are quite weird in the way that they, they score poetry and, mm-hmm. and in a way validate the, the, the story that you're telling or the emotion that you're feeling. And I don't know, it's a really weird thing, but performing um at the championship and winning was really it was it was really nice because i had juma um his mentor of mine in the audience and um someone very important to me chris lawrence was there and it was really emotional so that was it was great um stuff that i'm up to at the moment is i'm doing a lot of projects Uh, i've got a lot of gigs coming up i'm hosting international women's day in brighton um, in March, 5th of March, so that'll be amazing. Mm. And just a lot of um, poetry gigs and training at drama school, art said that's obviously a huge part of my life. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm just pursuing a lot of creative projects at the moment. It's, yeah. it's very busy, but really enjoyable. Good. I'm very lucky. Excellent. Um, yeah, I think it's always a, a huge shock to our listeners to find out that our guests don't always have poetry is their only the sole commitment in life and yeah the only thing I've got no, going on. <laughs> no god I've got <laughs> so much that sometimes it's hard to juggle but it's really yeah. it's really nice to have, have the opportunity to yeah that's great um so I think we'll have your third and final poem please amazing okay so it's weird this is the poem that gave me the most confidence about my work and it's always a favorite of mine to do Um, and it's about a really unbelievable guy that I met on my way home one time and sometimes I think it's great to dedicate a person like that to literature. 
So yeah, this poem's called How Much. To the guy who asked me how much, I'm sorry that I felt the need for some clarification, but you see, in this consumer nation, you truly appreciate the confusion. Thing is, I was stupidly under the illusion that I looked like a human being, not a fucking shop. But since you're asking, I just really wanted to know, were you wanting some green or a bag of snow? Or was it that you wanted a pirate DVD? Because I'm sorry, I don't have a copy of Finding Dory. But good sir, you know, I do aim to please. And though I can't offer you any of these, I wonder if you could please appease me and tell me what piece of me you need. Shall I be grateful that you asked instead of forcing it on me, considered presenting it to me consensually? Even offered to pay a fucking fee. Owen, oh, what is the going rate for spitting on my civil liberties? If you let me know, I'll try and sort of buy one, get one free. I'm curious, really, what it was about me that made you want to reduce me to a mere piece of me. How does it work? Are you looking for a hand job or a blow job? Because either way, you're going to remain unemployed. You know, it's funny. I even toyed with the thought that there was something in my look that day. That I was giving off a vibe I can't really describe. It must have been something in the way that I dressed. Now that I reassess it, I did hear that duffel coats were the new aphrodisiac shit. I'm a sleazy act. Call me a slut. I should have known better. I could be a great trendsetter and convince myself this wasn't a big deal. Don't make a mountain out of what the media would call a molehill. Cause girls, don't you know that sex sells? He's merely buying. Are you even trying to see it from his point of view? I mean, damn, look at you. He's asked for your consent. It's got to be a fucking compliment, right? Except, <laughs> I don't think that's quite right. You see, despite the fact I like to write, and even on the night, tried to fight. I slapped you on the head before you ran, you shit, and kicked your motorbike to bits. Did fuck all damage, but I went for it. Screamed at you to dare to come back for it. Despite all that, you still managed to make me feel sick. You still made me feel dirty in my own skin. You still managed to make me feel unsafe three minutes from my own bed. So... When it's all done and said, these words don't help me sleep at night. They don't stop me from being scared of the sight of the next pizza guy on a motorbike. My friend called me a fucking superhero, but I'm not. So I'd like to hand in the cloak because it doesn't make me brave that I spoke. It meant I was tired of being afraid, of hating the person in my reflection because of some dickhead trying to satisfy his erection. So, Mr. Pizza Guy, you may think I'm weak, but I'm still going to speak. I may not be the Hulk, but you won't make me believe that we can't be incredible. Not anymore. So here's the final score. I'll try and keep it mature. I wish I could eradicate you because your existence makes my brain hurt, but I don't think that'd work because you're like a stray pube. You get rid of one and five more come to the funeral. So I'm just going to say this straight. If you could stop looking for young women on their way home. That would be just great, because uh, trust me, they're not looking for you. If I'm honest, I was looking for a chicken cheese with garlic mayo and chili sauce, and I still bought it, and I ate it, and it was amazing. Bit expensive, but pretty damn tasty. And to answer your question, it was £5.50. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so finally, uh, where can our listeners find out more about your work or find more of your work? Do you have any blogs, websites, Twitter? Yeah, so I have a YouTube channel that um, it would be great if anyone likes my poetry. Um, there'll be more like footage being uploaded shortly. Uh, and if it, it's easily found on YouTube as rain walks so that's r-a-y n for nigeria w-o-k-s you type that into youtube and you'll find my youtube channel rachel walker um, and then subscribe and then you'll get updates about videos that i upload also i have a twitter 
um, at Rainwox, R-A-Y-N for Nigeria, W-O-K-S, and an Instagram, but that doesn't tell you anything about my poetry. It's just p nice pictures. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. That would be it, really. Oh, I've also got a Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Rainwox. Again, so any of those will tell you what, what I'm up to in gigs and things like that. Lovely. Thanks very much, Rachel. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Lizzie. Thank You're you. Welcome. Uh, and as usual, we will put all of those links underneath the video on our YouTube channel. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.